ahead and get started, even though we know Miami time, people will dip in later, which is great. Um, we are just thrilled again to be with you tonight talking about a very important topic. And we're just a week into the school year. And I have to say, I don't have kids yet of age that are going to school every day, but I'm, I've been out of lunch ideas since April. So I'm excited to get some fresh ideas, as well as just a, a reset on my children's nutrition. And I just have some questions specifically about, you know, sugar intake and sodium fiber, all these things that I remember studying in college, but now that I have a family, it's like really important. And I feel like I've forgotten a lot of that info, but have no fear. Um, we've got <laughs> Dr. Amanda Fifey with us tonight, who is the assistant professor of pediatrics, and she's also the director of pedi pediatric nutrition. So in the division of the pediatric, pediatric gastro excuse me, these are big words <laughs> I struggle to even say, but she, in the Division of Pediatric Gastroenterology and um, Hepatology, which you'll have to tell us more about because I'm not sure I even really know that whole realm, but of course the nutrition piece, but we are just so thankful that she is here. She completed her training in both pediatrics and gastroenterology at the University of Miami in Jackson. So she spent some time there. Um, she actually started Jackson's first dedicated nutrition clinic. So she sees patients with a variety of nutritional complaints, everything from obesity, underweight, picky eaters. Anyone in the audience have a picky eater? <laughs> Surely somebody out there, I know I've got one. Um, food allergies, children who have specialized diets. Um, and she's also works with um, registered dietitians and counsels patients for every visit. So in addition to all that, I don't know how she has any more time, but she has published original research on nutrition and growth as well as been featured in the Miami Herald. So she has got lots of great information I know to share with us tonight. Um, and I know that her heart and her passion is remaining committed to supporting the health of children and helping them maintain healthy nutrition and growth. And that's what's really so important. What we're excited to learn about tonight is how can we be helping our children have these healthy habits you know from the get-go whether you've got a newborn and you're just starting you know you'll be starting solid foods eventually or you have teenagers and you're trying to help them build a balanced diet so um, we're just so glad you're here thank you for joining us thank you for having me <clears throat> i'm very excited to be here thank you Thank you for that oh, okay. great introduction as well. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> we're so excited. And I, I got to say, we, can we just dive right in? Because I've got a number of questions and I want to make sure we get to them all. But again, um, audience, as you're listening in, if if she's, you know, kind of piques your interest on something or if you think of a question, drop that in the Q&A box and we'll do our best to get to it. But let's start off with, I know that there are limits to probably the amount of sugar that my child should be having because I can see the effects of it when they start bouncing off the walls. But um, can you tell us a little bit about that and how can we know if our child is having too much? So, <clears throat> I mean, the recommendation that we would usually give to parents when it comes to sugar is that we typically don't want any added sugar. There's like no, it's not necessary to add sugar to food. Uh, there's lots of naturally occurring sugars in foods and sugar is definitely not something that we have a hard time getting in our diet. The typical, you know, childhood American diet is full of carbohydrates and, and, and sugars. Um, and so it's not hard for us to get sugar. So no parent should really be worried that their child isn't getting enough sugar. That's, it's not really a thing, um, fortunately. Right. So what we are worried about more is that we're getting too much sugar. Um, and that's why we say we don't want any added uh, sugar in the diet. So we try to eat all natural food. We, I always tell my parents when you go to the grocery store, you try to shop on the outside of the grocery store as much as you can. Right. You know, not in the middle because the outside has all the natural foods. All the real food is what we, what we want to get. Um, and so we will find sugars that are naturally occurring in fruits and vegetables. And those are definitely fine. There is, uh, you know, all kids should be partaking in fruits and vegetables. We encourage them to have those. And as, uh, you know, for children, sugar from fruits is not really a worry. I don't advise parents restricting fruit intake to try to restrict sugars. Where we're getting the sugars. Okay. And we're so worried if about two bananas, like that's better than a banana and a pack of goldfish, right? Exactly. Or better than a banana. I always tell parents this too. It's better to have, you know, 
whatever, 10 strawberries and is to have more mac and cheese or more pizza or something right. else. So it's fine to give them more, um, more fruit. Um, and it, it's, it would be very unusual unless you have a very special medical conditions. If you have a healthy, regular kid that they're going to run into too much sugar from fruit. So sh fruits are completely fine. Where we do run into the problem with sugar is the sugary drinks. By far and away, that's uh, going to be yeah. getting to our kids. Um, the sugary drinks are just so easy to take down. Like, it's so easy for a kid to sit and just chug down, you know, a 10, 12 ounce drink before you know it. And they've gotten, you know, hundreds of grams of sugar. So it's right. very important wow. to watch the sugary drinks. That's where they're getting most of the sugar from. And, you know, it's, it's kind of... Uh, it's tricky for some parents because some sugary drinks are actually advertised as health drinks and they actually are not health wow. drinks. Wow. And so it's right, important right. to try to avoid the added sugar in drinks and to go really mm -hmm. for the whole foods, the fruits, the vegetables, and have more water than having, uh, yeah. uh, having juices or sodas. That's so good. That's so good. Talk to me about, so from, that's from the sugar standpoint, what about sodium? Because that's something I really don't think about but it has an effect, right? Right. I mean, so luckily for kids, most healthy kids, sodium won't be a huge problem the way that it is for adults. So we find that a lot of adults would have uh, medical recommendations to watch their sodium intake. Of course, it has to do with blood pressure and heart disease. And kids right. usually, even if they have problems with food or overweight or obesity, usually are not uh, they're not dealing with a lot of issues in terms of blood pressure or heart disease. Right, so right. they get away with a little bit more sodium. But, you know, you say, if I have a picky eater, if I want to eat healthy, how do I do this? And how you do this is you start early. You're like, the earlier you start, right. it's learned behavior, right? So we want, we want to be healthy, to be healthy examples for our children, and we want them to start early having right. healthy food. And so that's why I would give recommendations on not having high sodium foods because you don't want that acquired taste to develop just like the sugary drinks where now the child becomes a 16 year old and this is how they are accustomed to their food being prepared, a 25 year old, a 40 year old, and that's how they're accustomed to their food being prepared. So similarly as with sugar, just remember that sodium is naturally occurring in lots of our foods already. A lot of our meats have sodium vegetables, especially if we're doing canned um, vegetables or canned foods, it's full of sodium soups, uh, like other things that could be healthy, like chicken soup, you think, oh, I'm feeling sick, that's healthy, can be full of sodium. Um, cheeses, right. uh, snack cereals, they can all have sodium um, within them already. And so again, it's hard, but as much as we can not add excess sodium where possible, because that is a learned right. taste. And if you do eat your food with a lot of sodium growing up, you know, the things that my mother taught me, I tend to continue that on because I get accustomed to that taste. Um, and so right. to try to use other spices to season that might be a little healthier, like using garlics and onions and stuff that yeah. we use. I'm from the Caribbean. And so we like very I love it. food. <laughs> We're accustomed to our food being very seasoned. And so, but to try to avoid salt as the seasoning and use other seasonings that don't add sodium in that way. Okay. That's good. Yeah. So you can still get that flavor. Exactly. Without, right. We don't want the bland bad food. Bad we want it to taste good, but we want to do it the healthiest way that we can. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I bet you've got some great recipes. I'm like, can you send us your family cookbook? Because I'm sure you have some good ideas, which we'll get to more, um, to more later. But I do want to ask a question kind of offshooting that, you know, you, you mentioned how important it is to set the example for our children. Um, we got a question from the audience and this, this particular person says that they caught their stepdaughter sneaking stat sneaking snacks and they don't restrict her, but like they confronted her about it. And she's like, well, I don't get to eat this at my mom's house. And so they're just want to make sure that she's not overeating bad things and they don't want her to hide, you know? Yeah. So do you have any advice for how to kind of help her navigate that? So it's, that's a really tough question. And you know, if we could solve that perfectly, I would definitely have, we'd have very much healthier population. Um, right. The problem with the sneaking is that, you know, it stems from a restrictive environment that may become too restrictive for a child. So whereas, I, which is why, you know, I repetitively say we start as early as possible, you know, talk to your pediatrician, talk to your doctors about, you know, healthy eating habits from, you know, under one year old, from the time you start introducing solids, let's talk about healthy food and how we can encourage our children to eat healthy food and to have a healthy relationship with food so that snacking doesn't become something that they see as this special, you know, even desserts, we say, don't use them as rewards. Don't use desserts desserts or treats as rewards right. because then kids see it as this coveted thing, this reward they must go after. And then they, when they have the opportunity, yeah. they will eat as much as they can. So, and then we try to substitute right. where we can healthier things that taste good. It, like I would hope that if I had my kids here, they wouldn't say they eat only food that tastes bad, that they have healthier options <laughs> that taste good that you can use in right. place of, or 
in adjunct, like, you know, together with the unhealthier foods. So for example, if I have a son that likes to eat Cheetos a lot, um, and so to ways to get empty Cheetos, I would portion control. So portion control means that you're not going to buy the entire huge bag of Cheetos that the company wants to sell you because they want you to eat this much calories at a time. You buy, you, know, right. you, buy, if you buy the bigger bag, you portion it out, you separate out five sticks of Cheetos or six sticks. And it sounds ridiculous, but if you start doing it from young, they get accustomed that that's how much Cheetos they get. So that's normal, you know, and you portion it out in pretzels or whatever it is that they like, and you portion out a small portion of that. And then I complement that with something else that might be a little healthier. Um, So then I give him that with some fruits or I give him it with carrots or I do it with the other thing you can do is air fr- air popped popcorn that has no butter. Um, oh, people might go, yeah. oh my gosh, it sounds horrible. But popcorn actually has a very small amount of calories, you know, per cup of popcorn. It's, it's right. a lot of air. So if yeah. you are feeling for that, you know, kind of savory snack that's not as sweet, yeah. you can try to mix the popcorn in with a few Cheetos. So I do like five Cheetos and a handful of popcorn. So then he gets oh, full, he feels satisfied, he feels he gets his fix, but it's in a healthy way that limits the calories, at least by half, because you right. take half the bag of Cheetos. And we find, you know, encouraging ways, like I say this, like it's super easy and I don't expect it to be easy. It's not, it's very hard. No, you're right, but you're right. You, Mamas are like, you, oh yeah, no. <laughs> exactly, but you find little ways to come to compromises and it's an open conversation, just like we talk to our, our kids about other things that they need to do in their life that they might not like to do, like homework or like playing video games that they might sneak and do. I have a son that sneaks to play video games and I have to have healthy conversations with him the same way about foods and not sneaking things the same way about video games and doing homework. It's all like, it's not punishment to make your kids eat healthy. And, you know, sometimes people are scared right. to enact that rule of healthy eating, mm-hmm. but they're okay to enact homework as a rule or they're okay to enact other right. things in the yeah. house as a rule but healthy eating is what's going to carry your child throughout their life and so it's actually a gift to give them healthy eating so I try to find those little ways to uh, to get healthier versions of these snacks and to have a good healthy conversation about what we do eat what we don't eat and how we portion control I think portion control is it's big yeah Dr. Baby, that's good. We're only like a few minutes in, but I'm like, that's the line of the night right there, that it's not a punishment, you know, to teach your child and ask your child, require them to have healthy eating habits. Like that's a life skill that we're giving them just like how to walk and how to talk and how to all these other things. Exactly. And just as parents, you know, some of us, myself included, wish that we, well, we want that skill for ourselves. Like we wish that we could pick the healthy food, that we don't have the taste for all these foods that might not be that great for us, that we have the self-control, that we have the ability to decide for which food. And that's why, you know, we're here doing this because we all want this skill. And so imagine your child getting the skill from a young age and then you just foster it as they get older. It's something that they will carry on to their own children as well. That's right. Oh, that's so good. Okay. The moms are in, in the, uh, the audience is loving this. So lots of questions coming in. We're going to try to get to everything. Okay. One person asked that they kind of, they start the day with cereal. They hate that. Like, do you have any other breakfast recommendations? And alongside that, talk about eggs. Is there like a limit to how many eggs you should kind of have in a week? Cause that's my go-to and I'm like, maybe I'm yeah. eating too many eggs. <laughs> yeah. So I think, okay. So first part would be the cereal. So I would have yeah. to say that there are some times that you have to give yourself a break. And so I tell yeah. parents and kids that all time and it, it just means that you have to be work on another area that you're going to be healthy on so if right. you know if a breakfast cereal is what has to happen because I will say cereal does happen sometimes in my house on breakfast because I'm <laughs> we're very busy we're all busy we have a ton of things to do and it's not okay. that we can make eggs every morning or it's something you know cut fruit up every morning so I cereal does occur in my house but then I know that okay I have to pick another meal at dinner time or lunch time where I'm more prepped and prepared right. or a healthy snack that day I'm not going to let Cheetos happen that day if I'm doing cereal because these cereal cereals unfortunately are really filled with sugar um and so the sugary cereals you know they could be they could have high levels of of sugar in cereals up to you know eating the equivalent of of a chocolate chip cookie in sugar in a cereal bowl. So you, you know, it's kind of like some of these cereals are actually kind of like desserts um, that these kids are yeah. having to start the day. So, um, so, you know, try to pick the whole grains where you can, the sugar less, of course, but most kids are going to scream and cry if you try to give them sugarless um, cereal. But I would say that, you know, on days where you do have to do that, you know, if you it, don't punish yourself for doing it, there are occasions where it will happen. And then, you know, try to make it up on the tail end, just like for ourselves, if we have an unhealthy, you know, Saturday morning because we ate something we didn't like, then maybe we'll try to be better on Sunday or you try to be you right, know, right. more strict per se with the food um, and another meal. So try not to have like all unhealthy meals throughout the day. So that's okay. with these cereals. Um, 
So other breakfast things that you can use, I mean, so eggs are definitely, um, there is not a real, like there's no guideline or recommendation. Again, as I said, children don't really deal at young. So in teenagers, we're seeing it more and more. And I run an obesity clinic. So I see wow. a lot of this. So we see your cholesterol issues. We see, you know, um, issues wow. with the hyper, you know, hyperlipidemia and stuff. And usually not to medication requirements, but that we have to restrict their diets. And so Eggs that are known to be high in cholesterol, egg whites healthier than egg yellow. So you can try, you know, play with that. So you can do like, you know, two egg whites, one egg, one egg yolk, if you wanted to make, so that it doesn't change the texture and color so much because then kids might not eat it anymore. Right. Um, but you can be doing <laughs> eggs, you know, a, a few times a week, three or four times a week is not an unhealthy choice. Egg provides good protein. And remember these kids are all growing and we want them to grow. We need to meet protein requirements. And if we think of a lot of the foods that we eat, uh, kids would prefer to eat, they don't have much good protein in them. So they're going to eat in a lot of bread, pasta, rice, and they don't have foods with good protein. So I find egg to be a good protein source. And I encourage patients, uh, my kids to eat eggs, um, you know, a, a few times a week, three, four times a week would be fine. And then the cereals okay. in between. Um, and then a fruit is always a good option. And so if you can do half the amount of uh, cereal and then do a fruit so if they'll have a fruit that they like like apples or something okay. you can do half a bowl yeah. they don't have to let them know that it's half a bowl you put you pour it out right. in a regular bowl so pour the, still getting especially, it. <laughs> right especially if you start from a five or six year old they're not going to tell so you pour it out and then you yeah. slice up an apple with it or i do a tangerine or i do something you know grapes or whatever with it too so that they get more okay. full they have the cereal that they like but they also get to they also get the fruit or, or i do you know one egg or i do you know just one egg in the morning with one slice of toast instead of two and then some fruit so that it balances off because so that they're getting the healthy food, but they're also getting the food that they like. We can't restrict the food that they like completely. That would be right. miserable for them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Great ideas. Okay. What about maybe people who do bagels and stuff? Is there kind of an alternative to bread where you're still, you're taking eggs, fruit, yeah. would you say like oatmeal? Or right. So oatmeal, I think oatmeal is a great um, uh, breakfast dish because you can add a lot of fruit to it. So the guidelines for fruits, right? If I could get a little technical, we recommend yeah. six to nine servings of fruits per day. That's the, that's the guidelines of what fruit intake for everybody. And you know, when I talk right. to these kids wow. that they come to my clinic, I tell the family, like we, everybody needs to do this. This is not like the kid's job. This is the whole not family. For the kid, right. but we all, myself included, we all need to be having six to nine fruits and vegetables per day, which I say, if you aim for nine, then maybe you'll get six servings and then you'll be good. Okay. So I say we aim for nine, the way that you can do servings. So your kids are two ways. One is you can use the, the size dish that you use as appropriate for their age. So it doesn't have to be a huge dinner plate if you're feeding a six-year-old, of course. Um, right, you right. want to do the size of the plate that you're feeding them on half of the meal is going to be fruits and vegetables each meal. So okay. three or four times a day, they have half a plate of fruits and vegetables or half a bowl or whatever it is. Right. Okay. So that would be one way. And then if you do that, you'd get six to nine servings. If you did that every meal, right. or you can do handfuls. So with their little hands, how many ever fruits they can hold in that little hand is going to be a serving. And so you give them oh, two wow, servings. One serving. Yeah. One serving is in their okay. hand. So if you give them grapes okay. and they can only hold five grapes in their hand, that's a serving of grapes for that age. If they okay. can hold 10, then that's a serving for that age. Um, gotcha. And then, so that, that's being said, a whole, an apple is going to be more than a serving for most children. Right. Apple's probably going to be a serving and a half. Um, of fruits and vegetables. And it's the same thing with the vegetables. You can do peas or carrots or whatever. And try to get that into the food, uh, into food every day. Try to have that mixed in with the meals that they're having. Um, in terms of other, you know, breakfast ideas, I, I, as I said, as you had mentioned, the oatmeal, I think it's a very healthy option if we could not add sugar to it. Right. <laughs> if we can do it without sugar added and do fruits instead. Um, yogurt. I'm a huge yogurt fan, especially oh, Greek yeah. yogurt. Um, so it's a good way to get great protein. It's a satisfying meal and it doesn't, and then you use a Greek yogurt, low sugar, and you can add fruit to it as well. And so then they can get fruit with yogurt. I have a question about that. I'm sorry to interrupt you because I love Greek yogurt too, but I love the vanilla kind. So should yeah. I steer away from like a flavored kind? So I'm not against the flavored kind if it's vanilla extract that they're using to flavor it as long as they're okay. not using a ton of sugar to flavor sugar. it. Okay. So that's why it's important that we think of, you know, it's, a, it's such a a battle, like I tell, you know, some of my kids, I wish I could come to the grocery store and shop with you because it's such a hard thing for people to figure out what's the best thing. And, you know, right, most right. companies, unfortunately, really just want to sell us the food, right? So yeah. they'll put anything on that label to sell you the food. And sometimes they advertise like, oh, they want to sell you this yogurt, you know, not usually not Greek yogurts, the yogurt. And it's, you know, they're going to put all over the label that it's fat free. And then we're going to think, oh, this is healthy. It's fat free. I'm buying okay. this one. And it's actually not great. And I tell my parents, stay away from fat free things because fat free yeah. things usually have 
a ton of added sugar because they're trying to make it taste good. So if you take all the fat out of it, it's not going to taste that great. And so they have to add a lot of sugar, but they advertise it as fat free, no cholesterol, no saturated fat, like all this stuff. So that we will buy it, uh, you know, we'll be fooled and buy it as a healthy snack or healthy meal. So for the Greek yogurts, usually even the vanillas, once you read, you know, the labels, you'll see that most of them don't have much added sugar. They have low sugar, low calorie. Most of them are about 90 to 100 calories. They have high protein. They're about 10 to 12 grams of protein, which is great for kids. And they are usually regular fat. So they're not high fat and they're not low fat. They're regular fat. And there is a a certain amount of health that is like fat that is required for regular health and satisfaction in meals. So I'm not against regular fat uh, yogurt. So I think yogurt is is a great choice if you don't do the low sugar ones. If you do the low sugar, sorry, you don't do the low fat ones, yeah. Advertising is strong and it gets us, oh, we don't even realize it's to be educated yeah. is so important on these topics. Yeah. So many questions coming in. I love it. Okay. Give us a quick, a few of your favorite, like after school, healthy snacks. Okay. So, I mean, it's a lot, as you can tell, we mix, mix, mix around a lot of these same things. I, a lot of these snacks are going to be that we, foods that you incorporate because most kids, as you know, we all know, don't eat a huge range of a different types of food. I right, try right. to take my kids to the grocery store with me so that they can try to pick the foods that they want. So you kind of get them involved in the process, get them invo- involved yeah. in the, you know, cutting up of the food and the cleaning and the, and the cooking as much as you can. I don't do very well at that, even though I'm saying I do. So don't feel bad if you don't, if you don't succeed. But as much as you talk about it, you know, the more they're involved, hopefully they'll catch on. Um, I always try to introduce new foods to the kids. I like that. Let them see me eating lots of different, trying lots of different fruits, lots of different new vegetables, different types of food. But most kids are going to be very uh, specific, especially when they're in that school age, preschool age, they like only very few things. So, um, so the snacks are going to be a lot of the same things. So if you were going to do say cracker, for example, I try to tell my parents, like, we want to incorporate healthy fat. So healthy, normal fat, not high fat. So not fried foods, right. not a ton of butter or cheese added. Um, but you want to do healthy fat, protein in almost every meal. If you just do a plain carbohydrate snack, usually that kid is going to be hungry very quickly after. So if you just do crackers alone, they're going to be hungry soon after. So maybe put some peanut butter on there for the kids that, that can tolerate peanut butter, almond butter. You can even try cheese because that makes them more satisfied and then mix it in with some fruit or vegetable of their choice. And even if you have a picky eater that only likes grapes, it's better, as we talked about earlier, to give them, you know, I do like five crackers with, you know, even if you want to do some turkey or cheese or whatever and you do a few crackers and then half of the plates I put grapes because remember we want to keep that half to half ratio of fruits uh, of fruits and vegetables or I do grapes and carrot sticks or something like that and then get them hopefully to eat like that if they won't try anything but grapes it's okay to give them more like to have them have grapes you know daily rather than have crackers only daily or you know every single day they're eating cereal only it's better to at least get them to eat the one the things that they would like so when you find those things I keep encouraging them yeah Oh, and I love just a reminder about dividing the plate. I think about, it, I have little people, but I, I have, um, you know, typically the kid's plate is divided because kids don't want their food to touch. Yeah, sure. But also I, I, I have to remind myself like that big one. I'm like, that's not the place for the mac and cheese. You know, exactly. mac and cheese is not a vegetable. Exactly. <laughs> put the fruits, the vegetables there, put the little meat in the smaller you know, just those things are so helpful. Yes, that's, um, that's an excellent thing because that's exactly what we do. We put the carbs on the big partition and that should be even for ourselves. We always have to remember that. That's where your fruit, salad, vegetables goes on the big, on the partition. Awesome. Okay. Oh, I love all the questions. Moms are like, oh, we have more questions. Um, okay. Let's talk about cheese a minute. Cause we got a couple questions about cheese. One question, and we were talking earlier, you spoke about cholesterol and teens and this mom, it sounds like her daughter, um, is a healthy weight, but, and they eat healthy at home, but her cholesterol is high. And so she, the mom suggested let's cut back on our cheese, but her daughter was very upset. Don't take away my cheese. Um, so what would you suggest? So, I mean, cheese is a favorite of many people and cheese and yeah. eggs, um, we're both gonna provide some cholesterol. Um, it's important to look at the cholesterol profile and to figure out like exactly, you know, speak to your doctor and figure out exactly what area of the cholesterol, uh, you know, it's, if it's the dietary part, there's exercise, there's genetics, there's a lot of things that influence cholesterol, especially in a in a thin, you know, regular weight kid, um, that, right, there's, right. that, you know, you, you wanna be sure what you're cutting out before you do. I would say that cheese, I am a cheese lover myself, so it's very hard for me to give advice on cutting cheese, but 
but I would say that you want to have everything as we said again in moderation. So if you did make a mac and cheese dish, because I know everybody loves mac and cheese, I cannot take that away from any kids that come to my clinic. So including my own children. So I say, okay, we can have mac and cheese, but as you said, you divide it into the partitions of the plates, a quarter protein, a quarter of your carbohydrates and a, and a half of fruits and vegetables fruits mixed vegetables. in. And that will limit, and it will be hard to get the cholesterol up if you're doing cheese, if you're limiting cheese in that way. That would not, it, right. it, it would be unusual that you can get your cholesterol up. One thing that I would say that people don't know this sometimes, you know, one of the other things besides the yogurts that we get fooled with is that oils. So lots mm -hmm. of people will tell me, oh, so I do a weight loss clinic um, because I, I take care of some kids with obesity and, right. uh, you know, we do recommendations and then parents will come and tell me, oh, these are the things that have changed. And so some of the things that they've changed is, I know I use olive oil only now. I don't, or I use avocado oil, or I don't, I don't, I only use these types of oils. And it's very important to remember that oils are filled with calories. No matter what oil it is, the calories are the same. There's not a huge yeah. difference between the oil calories. Um, you okay. know, most of them have, in one tablespoon, there's 150 calories in one tablespoon of oil, right? So in 15 wow. cc's of oil, there's 150 calories. Oils are meant to be, that's why they provide energy. They're meant to be very dense, fattening things. Um, they're right. made of fat, right? So all types of oils are going to have a lot of calories. And so for a kid with cholesterol issues, simply switching to olive oil is going to be helpful because it has a different type of fat in it than corn oil or other oils might have, but right, it's right. still going to give you, it's still going to push a lot of fats into your system if you're using a lot of, if you're doing a lot of cooking with olive oil or with other okay. healthy oils. So you still need to limit them. You can use them definitely, but you just need to limit them and use it in a healthy way, okay. which is the I'm least- thinking about, about my the dinner I just fed my family and I felt so proud about the broccoli that I just doused in olive oil, you know? <laughs> I'm like, oh, maybe I should redo that. <laughs> so it's, yeah, I mean, it's not a bad thing to have olive oil. I don't want to say that, but I just, just be aware that if you're doing it as a weight loss perspective, it yeah. is not very helpful to lose weight using olive oil. They switch from coconut oil to olive oil is not very helpful. It's not yeah. going to be extremely helpful in weight loss. Right. Okay. That's great. Good. Okay. We can keep our cheese, everybody. This is good mm -hmm. news. Just moderation. <laughs> um, what about stevia versus agave? Are they safe? Are those safe to use? So we, so it's like, you know, it's an age old question. First of all, I would have to say, we don't know. Nobody knows with a hundred percent certainty what's safe, what's not safe. What we do right. know that what's affecting our children and our country the most right now, even more than COVID is obesity. Right. The biggest wow killer of people in our society is obesity. That's what's going to be a cause of yeah. death on the most, most death certificates if we go through more than cancer, more than everything else, right? So we wow. now know the role of sugars in obesity. Sugars play a huge role in obesity. And so we know that it's dangerous for our kids to have sugar. So is it ideal to have stevia and agave? Probably not. Is it better to have water? Sure. Is it impossible for your child to just drink water and then your they, they, uh, their other option is to then have a Gatorade or an apple juice or something else? Then you might want to meet in the middle and try the agave or the, you know, try one of the artificial sweeteners because you're going to get so much sugar and we know what sugar is doing to our diet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We know what to, but, but the ideal way is if we, you know, we could wave a magic wand, drink water. Eat the fruit. I always tell my parents, eat the fruit and drink water. Even if you say, so a lot of parents will come and tell me, oh, I do 100% organic or natural. The other thing is organic food doesn't also, it's not, doesn't have a huge role in weight loss, right? There's not a, a big role for organic food because organic food can still be filled with calories. Organic is just a label that they put on saying the way that they prepared the food, but it's not necessarily the nutrition of the food. So organic can cause, um, can, you know, if you switch to everything organic, but you ate the same food, you could still not lose any weight. The important thing with our, with our drinks is that sometimes parents will tell me, I'm using organic, 100% all natural juice. So I tell them, okay, yeah. if you wanted to make your kid orange juice, again, I'm from the Caribbean, so we make our own orange juice, right? So we say, we're going to make our own orange juice. Let's go into the backyard and pick oranges and squeeze our oranges and then drink this orange juice. How many oranges do I need to make 100% no sugar added pure orange juice? I need like 10 oranges to get a glass of orange juice this big, right? <laughs> so if you told me, if you said, oh, my kid is having 10 oranges three times a day with meals, we would say, holy crap, that's a lot of oranges. Right. That's 30 oranges of sugar a day. Like, yeah, we can have fruits, but that's a lot. And right. anybody would see that as unreasonable. But when they're doing the 100% juice, they don't see it as unreasonable. Mm -hmm. Even though the 100% juice is going to have a lot of sugar and some juices. My son says my favorite yeah. line is that apple juice, some especially baby and toddler apple juice, it can have more sugar than Sprite. So you're giving apple juice and you're getting more sugar than Sprite. And uh, everybody knows Sprite isn't good, but these juice companies right. are telling us they're organic and they're great. And so we're getting fooled. 
So I would, yeah, definitely. And then they put Elsa on there and then they yeah. really get you. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> okay. I want to shift, um, just running out of time. I wish we could just, we're going to, we could have questions for you all night, but we want to get, um, also to the other segment that That's we have. That's the best part. I can't wait for that part. <laughs> oh my Dr. Phoebe, this is so good. Okay. I want to shift gears a little bit. Let's talk from the gastroenterology perspective for a minute. I have a, um, a mom, assumingly, who asked a question that she practices baby led weaning with her baby and he's swallowing his food whole. And she's like nervous about digestion and processing the food. And then also speak to us about how do we know if maybe our children, you know, older children perhaps are struggling with stomach issues or Crohn's or how would you know? So I mean, we, uh, so for one for the for the baby question, I'll go first. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I'm not sure how old this uh, this baby is. I would assume, you know, maybe six, seven, eight months old. Um, the important thing is that babies at that age, they're not going to be great chewers. They're going to take time to learn. I have a seven month old myself. So I'm also doing the baby weaning and baby foods. Um, and it's important that they get excited about foods. They get excited to try things sometimes. And it's important that we crush up and prepare the foods appropriately. There's almost yeah. no limit to what food a new uh, young baby can eat. And in fact, we try to encourage foods earlier to prevent allergies because we right. want babies exposed to more things to prevent allergies. So I, we try not to restrict what they can have as long as it's not a choking hazard. So that's right. why it's important that if your child is going to swallow it, like you put, you know, applesauce in their mouth, they're just going to swallow it. You want to put the amount. So you use a little baby spoon. So you put the amount yeah. that is appropriate for them to swallow. And then you put the, um, the consistency that even if they swallow this whole, they won't have a problem until they become okay. into the over, above one year old, the 18 month range where they have more teeth, they're chewing now, and you, you're starting to get into more solid foods at, at the one year old, you know, more formed. But if, for now, we do a lot of uh, purees and thin foods. Um, and then just the important thing is to do a wide variety, lots of exposure then, because we want these memory taste buds to learn that they, all these great foods that we like, uh, that we want them to eat when they're older are there. And we want them to be, be more open to, and welcoming to having those foods when they get older. Um, in yeah, terms of the good. question for the older kids, I can't remember exactly what, oh, yeah, for just other like if, yeah. how do you know if your kid's having an issue, like stomach issues? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the most, like, so a lot of, tons of kids have abdominal pain and, you know, it's one of the most common, uh, referrals that we see, you know, we see like 50% of our, of my clinic is filled with abdominal pain. So it is a tricky question. Um, it is something that yeah. you should definitely talk to your doctor about if your child has abdominal pain. It's, uh, okay. not always related to food and sometimes we, you know, we put a lot into food thinking that it is related to food. And sometimes it, it, you know, there's lots of other things that it could be causing it. The way to tell with food, the most uh, valuable way there is allergy testing that you can do. And there are other things that we could look at, but the most reliable way to tell if you're uh, allergic to something is if you eat it, you feel bad and then you take it away and you feel better. And then usually, you know, in the presence of your doctor will say like, I'll bring the parents in and I'll say, let's try it again in my office. You try it again and the kid breaks out again or feels bad. Then we say, okay, this is, this is allergic. It doesn't, I don't need a test to tell me this. We don't need a test to say this, but you could also speak to your doctor about seeing an allergist if you wanted to do skin testing or blood testing to tell a food allergy. In terms of the other diseases, that you might have mentioned. So Crohn's and celiac and these other things that we might think we have our child has a serious problem with food that's causing them pain. Those kids usually have, not always, but they will can sometimes have other things. So meaning that they're otherwise fatigued, they're sleeping all the time, they are getting sick, they're getting fevers, you're getting sick more often than the other people in their class. They are not growing well. So their height is not growing well. Right. Your, your hus you and your husband are a certain height and your kid is much shorter than their siblings or people in their class. Their weight, they're losing weight. A kid losing weight that's not intentional is a huge red, yeah. red flag and you should okay. definitely see your doctor for that. Yeah, okay, that's good. Oh, that's good. Oh, so many great questions. I have more and I'm not going to get to them all. I hate it. Okay, real quickly, size of the plate that we should be using for like a five-year-old, like salad plate? What, yes, what exactly. Plate? So salad okay. plates. And even for my older kids that are struggling with weight issues, um, I try to tell them, start with a salad plate and you could have that di like, you know, that division of food. So always half of the plates is with fruits and vegetables, whichever fruits and vegetables they like, find it for them and give them the that half. They need to eat the entire plate of food before we move on to another plate. But for the older kids, they can, they can go for a second serving in that same proportion. So the goal is, I said, I get, I let my kids have pizza. You can have pizza, but you can yeah. get two slices of pizza and then a half a plate of salad. So you're going to eat yeah. all the lettuce and tomatoes and cucumbers and whatever you like. Yeah. And you get these two slices of pizza. My goal is that hopefully you'll be full after your two slices of pizza and half a plate of salad and you won't need four slices of pizza, you know, because right. you want to do yeah. Oh, that's so good. Okay. Oh, I'm just so sorry, everyone. We're not 
going to be able to get to all the questions and it's killing me because they're great questions. Um, okay, really quick. Let's see if I can combine a couple into one. Uh, how can we get veggies more to eat? You know, like our kids eat veggies better. This mom, like she's blending them in the soup, but she's running out of ideas. Um, and another mom quickly, just like, how do you feel about intermittent, intermittent fasting for teenagers for weight loss? Okay. So in terms of intermittent fasting, I think that you should definitely speak to your doctor about it as well. I do a keto clinic as well um, at uh, University of Miami in Jackson. And so we definitely work with kids with intermittent fasting. Um, and so it is safe and possible. It depends on your teenager. Of course, if your teenager is practically an 18 year old and normal weight, that would be easier to do. We don't want to do that in an underweight kid um, or you know, a kid that might be, struck, might be too young to tolerate uh, such a restrictive diet. There are right. ways that it can be done safely, but that's something that I wouldn't do without a dietitian or somebody helping you when they're that young or unless unless you are very uh, knowledgeable on it yourself um yeah. in terms of the fruits and vegetables as I said don't be too hung up on the variety if you're at the point where variety is not a thing I right. have a son right. who eats only lettuce cucumbers raw carrots will never eat them if they're cooked olives like he has very specific things that he's going to eat and so I make a salad of that every night and okay, you will eat you salad of this every night and then fruits he'll do better with fruit so sometimes I'll do that salad and I'll cut up apples like a green apple in the salad so then he's also getting okay. it there so you yeah. find ways to get that food in remember our kids a lot of times eat rice every day eat pasta every day eat bread every day and we're okay with it we don't say that oh no I need to find a different starch every day we're fine with giving them rice every day um you know in my house you're getting rice almost every day and we're fine to do that so don't feel too yeah. hung up on the fruits and vegetables I encourage more let them see you trying more try to mix it into the food if you know you introduce a new one but go with those staples and keep encouraging them to keep with those staples and don't skip a day just because they won't try this new vegetable go back to the right. staple vegetable if that's what you have well, that's good that's good Ooh, i love you're so quick and fast so i think we're going to squeeze two more questions in here real quick um with all the virtual learning happening at home kids are like snacking because of boredom any tips and then any vitamins that might be necessary so I'm not a huge supporter of vitamins, even though okay. I kind of like Great. it. I'm not a big vitamin I supporter. It. I'm a big real food supporter. I understand that sometimes you can't get real food, so feel free to use vitamins if you feel that your child might be lacking in certain, you know, in getting certain certain types of nutrition. But in real, the vitamins in real food is more bioavailable, meaning that your body is able to use it better. It's natural, what, as you know, it's, as natural as it can come. The vitamin C that you're getting in a tangerine can be utilized by the body instead of vitamin C that was extracted from somewhere made in a lab, put into a pill and then eaten in your food and went through your stomach. You know, it's just, it's not necessarily exactly the same thing. So if we can get it in food, we don't need to waste money on vitamins. And there, you know, that would, that would be somewhere where I would say that parents can save money and use it to buy real food instead of using money to buy vitamins, which most of the vitamins are water soluble. And so if you test the urine of a lot of these kids, the, all the vitamins are in the urine because they already got as much as they needed from the wow. food. And then you're not getting any extra, you can't use the extra. They're a lot of sugar, them. so you'll exactly. eat like that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I don't, I'm not a huge supporter of vitamins. If you can get real, real food in that it should be okay. fine. Um, I can't remember the other question. As well. Yeah, just helping our kids not snack out of boredom. Oh, right, yeah. So that, uh, yeah, again, that's, uh, that's a tough one. And I think that it's impossible to say they're not going to snack at all. We have to find healthy ways for them to snack, which would be encouraging as the stuff I said. So if your kid wanted to have a sweet snack, for example, so I gave an example of a salty snack where I do the air fried, uh, the, the air popped uh, popcorn with no butter or no sodium added um, and mix it in with the Cheetos or the chips or whatever, Doritos, whatever they like. So they get half the amount that they would have gotten normally. Um, and you'll be surprised if you okay. take out half of a serving of an unhealthy food. So some of these bags of you know, chips and Cheetos have 200 calories in it. If we wanted to exercise yeah. down, right? Because a lot of times parents think, they, you know, kids think and parents think, oh, they, you know, it's because they're not exercising. That's why she's gaining weight. Honestly, exercise is great for us. Or exercise helps, you know, endorphins and it helps us be fit and it helps lung health and heart and bones. But in terms of weight loss, exercise, unless you are a marathon runner, you can, it's very difficult to lose weight by exercise, yeah. right? Because remember to run yeah, off. Yeah. I tell my the kids, if they drink, you know, they eat one bag of Cheetos, they get 200 calories. If they try to exercise that off, they have to run about two miles like in 10 minute miles to burn off 200 calories I mean, wow. we all have yeah. fitbits and stuff on your phone that you can track how much calories you burn and you go for a run a two a two mile run i'm burning 200 and something calories and that's one bag of cheetos yeah. so it's going to be impossible to Ooh. burn off unhealthy diet right so it's important yeah. to just substitute with healthy a sweet substitute that i use um 
sometimes the kids is you can use Greek yogurt, you can use fruit and you can use whipped cream actually. So a small amount of whipped cream. Ooh, um, if you good. use the whipped cream, you know, because it's so much air, obviously I'm, I'm trying to get everybody to yeah. feed their kids air because I'm telling you to get popcorn and whipped cream. <laughs> but, popcorn, whipped cream. <laughs> yeah, people are going to say crazy. But if you need a sweet snack, this is obviously not a meal replacement, but if you need a sweet snack, like give them one scoop of ice cream or half of a scoop of ice cream instead of a three scoops. Put some fruit in there, so blueberries, raspberries, whatever you think they might like, and put a spoon right. of whipped cream. Most spoons of whipped cream, if you read the label, will say it has 15 calories. Some have two spoons has 15 calories. Some one spoon has 15, has 15 calories, depending on the brand and depending on if it's low fat or not. So it's 15 calories versus you know, a scoop full of, of, yeah. of uh, ice cream. So if you do that and then you mix that up, then they feel like I got this great snack. It looks pretty and everything. I got this great dessert, but they got half the amount of calories that they would have gotten if you are less than a half, right. if, if you did scoops of ice cream instead, three scoops of ice cream. Okay. Oh, that's a good tip. Oh, I want to go like have strawberries and Cool Whip right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pregnant. So I'm like, that sounds real good. Um, <laughs> Dr. Phoebe, thank you so much for being with us. Audience, sorry if we couldn't get to all of them. Let's see, hang around. And maybe at the end, we can shoot, you know, rapid fire you a few more. But cool. um, we're just grateful. And I, I want to make a plug because she did say, you know, yeah, talk to your, your nutritionist, your doctor. Um, here's one right here. So she's here at Jackson. Um, you can contact her and reach out to her, her office as well. Lots of amazing resources. Um, and just a reminder too, Jackson, like if your children ever need the ER, their children's ER is 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Um, their doctors are highly qualified and trained. So um, thank you so much, Dr. Fifi, for being with us. We just appreciate all your wisdom and insight. Of course, anytime. I'm excited uh, to see this cooking. I know, me to too. I, I think we're like literally in his kitchen. So, oh my goodness. <laughs> Jeff, Ralph Pagano, we're so glad to have you. Thank you for hanging with us. And we can't wait to see what you've got for us. Well, this is absolutely amazing. I'm telling you, I was taking notes the entire time. Uh, you are birth and a wealth of knowledge. This has been fantastic. I don't even know how I can follow that act. <laughs> oh, well, I love it. Let me tell our audience in case they live under a rock and they don't know who you are, which I can't imagine. But um, Shelf Ralph Bogato is an American chef and a television personality. So oh. New York City, born and bred, but he has traveled the world searching the flavors, bringing them back home to South Florida. He is the brains behind Naked Taco in Miami Beach and Coconut Creek. Um, and he appeared on the first season of Hell's Kitchen. And, you know, we all feel like we're iron chefs at home. Like when I cut my my um peanut butter and jelly into like you know animal shapes or i make mickey mouse pancakes i feel like iron chef but literally <laughs> shelf chef Fogato has battled bobby flay on iron chef he's also the host of ralph on the road on lifetime tv and he's the voice of food and drink on the paul castronovo show on big 105.9 and he's with us tonight and we can't wait we want to learn from you teach us some fun things where we can literally be an Iron Chef in our kitchen. Well, that's amazing. You know, it's funny. When I was on Iron Chef, I did exactly that. I brought out my, uh, uh, my Mickey Mouse pancake uh, maker, and that's what I did. I made the barramundi fish look just like a, a pancake, and that's how I whacked Bobby Flay. It was great. I love it. <laughs> so, you know, you know, you know the, uh, I, I've been listening the whole time and setting up, you know, and, and here's my story. I am a, uh, I'm a father. I have two fantastic children. They're five and a half years old. They're twins. Uh, they were born, I don't know, five years ago. Uh, and so they're in kindergarten Double right now. Yeah, you know, it's oh. the most incredible thing. And I'm a late dad to the game, right? So it's even more important. Um, I'm a dad. Uh, I'm a businessman. I own a couple of restaurants, as you said. Uh, in my spare time, uh, I do a radio show, a TV show. I travel the world. I beat up Bobby Flay, whatever it may be. Uh, but most importantly, the most important thing that happens in my life every day is feeding my children, right? It, it starts every day. Uh, sometimes through the midday, I'm gone, but uh, you know, I come back for dinner and then I go back out to work for the night. And you know, all the points that were made just a second ago are really, some of them I'm doing right and some of them I'm probably committed to doing wrong. I, I think there's a little bit too much fresh orange juice in my house now that I know about <laughs> it. Uh, but the, the fact is uh, making my kids eat better and getting them excited to eat has been something that I've been taking seriously since well, since the start, because what good it would be if I'm the chef and my kids don't like food, right? It would be like the most embarrassing thing ever in the whole world, right? So <laughs> I've managed to, it's okay. I've managed to uh, find a couple of tricks and a couple of ways where my kids get excited about food. And a couple of things that I figured out along the way. I don't know if you could see on the board behind me, 
A uh, little bit. Wrote, Tell us what it says. Well, it says eat every color every day, right? So okay. uh, what I try to do is teach my kids that every single day we're going to eat all the colors, right? So whether it's, oh, yeah, these are my little tricks, too. I'm going to jump right into it. Skewers are the tricks that I have to make my kids eat anything, right? So uh, if I give them a skewer with strawberry and banana on it, they tend to eat it because it's fun. Sometimes they use them as a weapon as well. <laughs> if I want them to eat cucumbers, uh, I put the cucumbers on a skewer and they love it. Or I make cucumber noodles using like the mandolin. So it's a little playful thing. So it excites oh. them to get them ready for it, right? So, or one of those Japanese spinners, I don't have one in front of me right now, but you can make ribbons out of anything, out of a beet, out of a turnip. And my kids go absolutely crazy for it. You know, speaking earlier about eggs, right? I was listening when you were talking about eggs. Right. My kids can't get happier that when I sit them up on the counter since they were little, and now they jump up and they hop up on there, crack the eggs right so we crack oh, the course. eggs they, they, they can't do it one-handed yet but i'm optimistic by the end of by the before christmas uh my son should be able to crack one by, <laughs> by by one hand but in the morning things that i like to do right so we make scrambled eggs in the morning or like hard-boiled eggs they just discovered the love of hard-boiled eggs and more fun of opening and unwrapping as i call it not cleaning unwrapping the egg. Oh, we're going to unwrap the egg because it's a little gift, right? It's got everything that you need. It. It's white. It's yellow. It tastes great. It's creamy. It's everything. The egg is perfect, right? So, um, but I get them super excited about it. We make in the morning. Um, my son, I feed him uh, gluten-free, right? Uh, he's got right. some, uh, some gastro stuff that I'm, that I'm uh, very alert to. So right. try to use glu eliminate gluten from his diet. And I use cashew flowers and almond flowers and oat milks and almond milks and cashew milks and pistachio milks, you know, to, to, uh, enter, to, to introduce uh, protein, but not so much dairy into his world, right? And, okay. you know, I, I use um, fresh bananas, mash them up with a couple of eggs and some cashew flour. And I make the most incredible cashew banana pancakes in the morning that are incredible. And then- Wow. Yeah, yeah, they're great. And it's easy. It's the easiest recipe in the world. You mash the, the bananas up, fold them together with some of the, the cashew flour, a couple of eggs and a spot of cashew or almond milk, mix it together with a little pinch of baking powder, and that's it. And it's great. And then I use, instead of syrup or any sweetener, I use agave, right, as I drizzle over the top for honey, right. and they just go crazy oh, yeah. for it, right? So I'm sure there's some, some science behind the honey or the agave more so than, than whatever it is. But I know it's better than putting syrup on any top of anything, right? That's or, right. Or That's butter right. You're elevating my so. Mickey Mouse pancake games. So right. You're, <laughs> you're going to, and then use the blueberries for eyes. It's great, right? You get all yep, those little yep. tricks. Um, but, you know, I've, I've had the benefit of being able to teach my kids a little bit about food by cooking for them at home, right? So uh, I put together, as I was saying earlier, I, I, I'm a dad. Uh, I run a business. I run around. This morning, I left my house at 5 a.m. Uh, I came to... Uh, my office to pick up uh, eight foot folding tables and coolers. And then I went to the first stop along the way in Coconut Creek and picked up three employees uh, and 300 salads made by my girl, Jess, uh, and, uh, and guacamole and corn queso. Put that all in a van, drove to Miami, picked up 1,200 burritos, took the 1,200 burritos, wow. brought them to uh, a split between Mercy Hospital and Jackson Hospital as an act of saying thank you to everybody. Ran right back to Miami Beach, came back up to Coconut Creek, had to put out some fire. And while this demo is supposed to be happening in my backyard doing something else, it is happening right now in the back of my kitchen because in the front they're making tacos. And I'm over here by the walk-in box. And I'm going to show you a couple of little tricks that I do in order to make everybody good. Oh, so, my goodness. We yeah, love it, it. We're thrilled it, to be in your kitchen. And I'm going to send yeah, you my address so you can send me 1,200 burritos. That'd I'll be great. send you 1,200 burritos. <laughs> you need them tomorrow? Because that's I, I, we can do it. We can do it in 18 you hours. Wait till Friday. Yeah, till uh, Saturday be fine. <laughs> Saturday All right, fine. tell us Save what you weekend. got for us. All right, so look at this. So one of the things when we talk about food, right, and you talk about sugars and all the different pieces is, you know, starch turns into sugar, right? We know that, right? That's how, that's how it creates it. But right now, it's September, right? What happens in September? Tomatoes are the best. Corn are the best, right? Potatoes, tomatoes, and all that dirt. That's what's happening right now growing out of the garden. And I have a garden alongside my house. Like everybody's either making sourdough bread or you're planting a garden during garden, COVID, right? That's right. right? That's what's happening. COVID right? did so, something 
positive in our lives. <laughs> so right now I'm growing alongside of my house. I've got uh, two key lime trees, uh, two orange trees, two lemon trees. Then I have uh, cucumbers growing, heirloom carrots growing, rainbow carrots growing, musk melon growing. I can't, I'm not growing any corn yet, but I used to live on the east end of Long Island and I fell in love with summer corn, right? So when you take the corn, and this is the great thing about with the kids, because I trim it up a little bit, you know, get that little hairy part off the top of the corn. But right. they give the kids something to do. Let them peel the corn back, right? Get them excited about it. My kids are five. Yeah. They, they love being in the kitchen because I put them on task. And I love them in put the them kitchen. Because I put them on task. Who's good at having kids if they're not doing anything for you, right? That's so, right. I, right <laughs> like do something. I remember I used to, I was vacuuming the, I was vacuuming my house when I was four years old. I, I swear, at least that's how I remember it, right? So, I you know, with it. corn, when you pull back corn, and look, I own Mexican restaurants, right? Elote drives my bus every day, right? So, you know, there's nothing better than fresh September oh, corn. Oh, that's and, right. And you, and you can see if it's fresh, you just put your little thumbs in it and it, it'll, it'll squirt out. If you see it's, okay. you see all oh, that yeah. squirt that just okay. happened? You know, Wow. Yeah. Yep. You Excuse squirt me. it. We thought. That's right. good. You know, the the squirting, of, right, that means it's fresh, delicious corn, right? It's moist. This corn, you don't even really have to cook. It's so perfect right now. It's sweet. Wow. It's tender. It's great. It's pretty good. Ralph, right? you're so, making us hungry. This is what I do. I, 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 I seduce people with food, <laughs> right? So we take that corn, you get your grill started. And what I'm going to show you right now is a couple of items that I do just using the grill or the oven and really easy, not too stressful, uh, pretty simple, flavorful and good for the kids. So you take that corn, you pull back the, the husk a little bit so it's nice and cool. And then you take the corn and you grill it, right? Pretty simple, right? Now you see that there's some grill marks, a little bit of char on that. I'll get a little closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This corn was on the grill, three minutes, aside, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, and done, right? So this is elote, right? This is how elote starts. Then I take the elote. Thank you, Brian. My able assistant is right next to me. Now, we were talking about cheese a second ago and the goods and the bads of it. Now, cheese is good protein, right? It's a good delivery system of it. Like anything else, you don't want to overdo it, right? But it's good to have a little bit. Same thing with eggs, right? So I make fresh mayonnaise at home, right? I take some egg yolks. I take some olive oil, a little splash of white vinegar, put it all in the food processor, drain the, drain the oil in. You can use olive oil. You can use canola oil, grapeseed oil. You don't want to have anything that has too much flavor to it because it'll overpower it and it'll become like a, uh, uh, too much of a delivery system of a different flavor. You want to kind of mellow oil for the flavor, right? So if you're going to choose an olive oil, okay. you want one that's mellow and easy, a light olive oil. So right over here, I took olive oil, uh, egg yolks, put in the food processor, white vinegar, squeeze a lemon juice, and then I just seasoned it up with a little bit. Now my kids eat with a little bit of flavor. So in here, I have a little bit of chipotle powder. I have a little bit of paprika. Give it a little bit of flavor, not too spicy, but just enough so it's not boring. And I've been doing that with them since they're two, right? So since they've been little, I've not been just giving my kids mush and nothing, to, you know, and, and, and nothing. I've been giving them food that packs with flavor because yeah. I want them to be able to have a palate. I want them to be able to understand it, right? So um, as Early was saying, if you introduce good habits when they're young, yeah. they'll have good habits forever. Well, the same thing, if you introduce flavor with them when they're young, they're gonna have good flavor forever, so. That's right, and don't give up. It takes several, I mean, like, keep trying. If they don't like it the first time, you don't throw it out the window. You just keep introducing it, keep trying. Yeah, yeah, this is, I, I'm, this is a, a life in progress, right? I'm telling you, I started right. feeding them like this when they were two, it's three and a half years later. Hold on one second. Yeah. Coming, coming right back. This is great. Chef Ralph, you need a cookbook because some of us, you say a little of this, a little of that. And I'm like, I need you to tell me two tablespoons of, because I get nervous in the kitchen, but you're so confident. We need you to write a cookbook for us one day. I will. I'll do anything you want for you at Jackson. There's nothing I will not do for Jackson. I, I, am, I am your servant eternally and forever. I, I would not be, I would not be here without you. I'm telling you, I, I, sidebar, I went today to the uh, to the trauma center and to the burn unit. And I saw Dorian, I spoke to Mary Ishii and I spoke to uh, Lou Pisano today. And you know, um, my life, would, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Jackson. And it's real, it's, it's, a, it's it don't get more important than that. You know, I, I'm, I'm with my children because of it and I'm here because of it right now. So if you want a cookbook, 
That's easy, right? So, um, <laughs> I'm gonna hold you to that. <laughs> that's done. So, um, all right, so I got a little bit of this fresh mayonnaise that I made with some of this little spice. And then I take the corn with a spoon and just rub it on. If you got one of those paint brushes, one of those little silicone brushes, they're nice. But if you don't have a fancy tool, it's okay. I'm sure you got a spoon in your house, right? Yep. And then I roll just a little bit of mayo glue. And that's glue. that mixture you were just talking about that you're putting all over it, right? Yep. It's just, okay. it's just egg, uh, with some uh, egg yolk uh, with the vinegar, uh, with the canola oil, olive oil, okay. uh, smoked paprika, uh, chipotle powder, just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of punch, but not overpowering. So the parents can eat it, the kids can eat it, right? And bring them along. And then I put, I arrange them on the plate. I'll arrange a couple of more for you. Let me do another one here a little faster. You want to make sure to cover it just enough. Not a, it, it's not submerged in this, in this delicious glue. It is uh, just enough to coat it. And then I take a little bit of fresh cheese here. I've got some cotija cheese and then sprinkle it over the top. And the mayo picks up the cheese. It makes it stick to it like a little bit of glue. And then, yeah. you know, what things that kids don't like to eat? Oh, I don't like green stuff. I don't like red stuff. I don't like purple stuff. Forget that. Start them when they're young. Feed them green stuff when they're young. Feed them purple stuff when they're young. This by the time they're four or five and they start to have some independent thought, it's already too late. You brainwashed them. They already love, they already love cilantro. They can't get enough of it, right? So, so good. I finished this with a little bit of green onion mm. and some fresh cilantro. And my kids pick this up, grab it by the husk, Look at that. and knob away at this all day long. You gonna see that? Can you oh, see that right beautiful. There? Can you see that? This is a, the best cooking show with no cooking you've ever seen, right? <laughs> I love it. Right, and that's an easy uh, setup. It's quick, it's simple. And right now with corn being where it's at, you know, Dial that back. You go to the supermarket, you go to the produce stand, you go to the farm stand, and whatever's fresh is what you're cooking for dinner tonight. And right. that's how the kids should be eating. Uh, my okay. kids fell in love with butternut squash, right? Oh, yeah. So butternut squash, uh, you know, two falls ago, right? I was on a butternut squash kit. I couldn't, cook, I couldn't myself, I couldn't get enough of it. I was roasting it, I was boiling it, I was frying it, I was baking it. And oh. now I just do a simple dice of butternut squash, I simmer it in a pan with a little bit of salt just to give it a little background. Just okay. as it gets tender, I take a little bit of agave and I throw a little agave in with it and just toss it a little bit just to give it a little bit of balance of, the, uh, of a little bit of, of salt with a little bit of sweet and I squeeze a lime. Oh, a lime. Okay. And uh, pe uh, pepitas on top, right? Some toasted seeds, right? Toasted pumpkin okay. seeds on top. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. End of story. So my oh. kids, Gobble that up right now. When we talk about snacks, they don't go looking for Cheetos. They don't go looking for chips. They go in the closet. They look for slivered almonds. They look for uh, pepitas. They look for natural, healthy snacks rather and not prepared stuff like I'll roast the almond for them, whatever it may be. But it's it's the um, the the constant reinforcement of what is good. It's easy. It's so easy to go into the chip aisle. It's the most easiest aisle in all of Publix. If you walk down there and you grab the Pringles and the Doritos and the, and the salt and vinegar chips and, you, and the Cheetos and the spicy Cheetos. Again, by the way, if you took some of those spicy Cheetos and grabbed them up and put them on top of that corn, it would also taste pretty good. <laughs> there you go. Guilty, guilty as God. <laughs> but we've been trying this, my wife and I, and she's, my wife is absolutely amazing. She does. Uh, you know, a, a lion's share of the work when I'm not around. But we've been doing so much to try and, uh, you know, give them good healthy habits. Another good healthy habit. Stuff that's fun to look at, right? So what's this? This is cauliflower, right? right? So yep. a big head of cauliflower, right? So kids know cauliflower, we don't like it. No, my kids dig it. Why? Because I take it and I make them have fun with it. I say, oh, look, it's a brain. We're going to have a brain tonight. They're like, oh, we're going to eat brain. Not like in a weird, we're going to eat brain way. Right, but like right, in a right. fun, we're going to eat brain way, right? So what do you do? Slice it in half, right? It's that simple. You know, cauliflower is so easy. You take a little bit of aluminum foil. You lay it down. You put the cauliflower inside. Take a little bit of olive oil. When I say a little bit, 
let's say, a labaceous uh, tablespoon and a half. Okay. Of olive oil on top of the cauliflower. I season it simply with salt and a little bit of pepper. And then just two, three garlic cloves go inside. Like salt, pepper, garlic, oil. Okay. So far, easiest oh, thing you've it. ever done. That's it. Then if you want to get fancy, you can throw some chili flakes. Uh, you can throw some saffron. You, can, you don't need any of that. You take the cauliflower. You wrap it up with the aluminum foil. You start it at 400 degrees. You open up the oven. You put it in. There's the oven. You come back about 20, 25 minutes later. Look at that. You TV open magic. It up through the magic of television. And then there's this beautiful, <gasps> delicious roasted. Let me put this over here like this. Oh, this is great. Hold on. I cannot wait I bet wait it smells so good, too. That garlic. Oh. Hold on, don't go anywhere yet. Hold on, let me get some of this. You know what it is? When you wrap, when you cook with, oh, look at this. This is so beautiful. When you cook with the, when you cook it in the foil, okay. see what happens? All that roasting goes on, right? All that caramelization mm -hmm. and all that natural sugar and that natural deliciousness of that cauliflower comes out. And that's where the yum happens right there. And my, I'm telling you, that's my the kids, stuff. they go nuts for it, right? And then, so what do kids usually want to do? They want to dip stuff, what? They want to dip it in ketchup, right? Yep. I don't put any ketchup in the house. You can't have any ketchup if you don't have any ketchup. So what do I make them? I make them chimichurri sauce. Okay. Right? So a little chimichurri Ooh, sauce. Oh, yum. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you put a little chimichurri sauce around the plate with the cauliflower. Then the kids take their little forks and their little sporks and their little knives, and I cut it up for them, and they drag it through, and they get this burst of garlic, with the parsley, with the cilantro, a little bit of vinegar, with the roasted from the cauliflower. And even if they're little, at least in my experience, and when I mean my experience, my kids and the kids next door and the kids next door, when they come over, we cook, they get in it. You know, they get first, they're like, no, nah, I don't want to eat that. I want chicken nuggets. I want chicken nuggets. But I don't even have a chicken nugget in my house. I wouldn't even know how to begin to even do a chicken That's nugget right. in my house. My kids like fish sticks. Right, so what do we do with fish sticks? Right. I go to the fish market. I go buy a piece of fresh yeah. fish, whatever it may be. I choose to go to Pops on Hillsborough Avenue. Hills, it's fantastic, by the way. There you Up go. The, you in, heard it here, in, folks. Uh, you heard it. Go to Pops. Tell them Ralph sent you. And what do they have? They've got uh, something like this week. They had striped bass. Sometimes they have turbo. Sometimes they have mahi mahi, whatever it may be. And then I just make a nice, easy. I use um, gluten-free flour. Uh, I run through gluten-free panko breadcrumbs. Uh, a little bit of beaten egg, dink, dink, dink. You go from the flour into the egg, into the breadcrumb. And then just in a nonstick okay. pan using uh, canola oil or grapeseed oil and just cook the fish stick easy. One, two, three, it's done. A squeeze of lemon on top. My kids will eat one pound of fish. A pound of fish. Wow. Just fresh fresh and fish, yeah. Fresh fish. Never frozen, but it, even if you had some frozen fish and you did it, it, it would still be okay, but not yeah. processed. Right. The whole idea. Yeah. I think that my takeaway from all of it, or at least the takeaway that I want you to take from this is cooking in a restaurant. We all know we go out to eat. I like to go out to eat, too, by the way, <laughs> is because yeah. somebody else is doing all the cooking. Right. That's right. <laughs> right. And somebody else is doing all the cleaning up and somebody else is taking care of all that. Um, I put together a little prep list for myself. I spend three or four hours on a Sunday or a Monday chopping, doing, bagging, doing everything that I'm supposed to do putting it in the refrigerator for a couple of two, three days. And this way I can be ahead of it. So when my kids are ready to eat, I just snatch out the fish sticks. I cook them in the pan. Uh, 15 minutes later, it's done. If you want to talk about oatmeal, right? I do overnight oats. I take the oatmeal at night. I put it in a bowl jar. I put some almond milk over the top of it. I put it in the refrigerator. Next morning, I take it out. I scoop it out and put it into a bowl. I take one of these fruit skewers. I put it on top of it. I drizzle a little bit oh, yeah. of honey on top of that. And the story, they fight over it, right? They can't get enough of it. And that's the game. I get them excited about the food. Um, yeah. I want to ask you real quickly about the cauliflower, because I'm going to do this this week. So it's just cauliflower, uh -huh. salt, pepper, olive oil, and garlic, right? That was it. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. There you go. That's all it is. What about in the people oven. are asking, what's the... Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. In the oven, 400 degrees for a big head of, for a big head of cauliflower like that, about 20 minutes, a little bit less. Okay. Okay. So, but it'll roast. It'll get... And don't be scared. Where there's color, there is flavor, right? So that's the whole secret, right? So cauliflower, 
is bone white when you start with it, right? So you want to you add some love to that cauliflower. And when you roast it, you, you, you coax out all that natural flavor. What you do is you shrink the water content and you really burst the flavor up on it. So oh, uh, color is good. Okay. What about what's the most nutritious fit, like fish to feed our family? And the easiest way to fix it, how about that? All right, well, uh, the, the, the broiled piece of fish will be the easiest piece of fish you'll ever make in your life. Uh, okay. Take a little, uh, again, a little tablespoonful of olive oil on a piece of fish, uh, a little squirt of lemon juice on the fish, uh, a little bit of sea salt on the fish, a uh, hot oven, toaster oven, turn it up to 500, uh, put the fish on something, uh, it, it, yeah, 500, but you want to get a good hot heat on it. Um, okay. I mean, right here, we're in South Florida, right? So mahi-mahi, yep. snapper, uh, tuna, uh, these are all perfect fish for this, right? Um, uh, just season it up a little bit. Get it up a little bit close to the to the to the broiler, uh, so that 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 caramelization can happen, and that's all you need to do. If you get a fresh piece of fish and you put salt, olive oil, and lemon on it, I guarantee you it's going to be delicious. Salt, olive oil, and lemon. I can do that. That's it. it you know, okay. less is more, right? The mathematics are less is more, right? You know, uh, you know, one of the things when I see all the cooking shows and they have. Uh, like, I look, I love chopped, it's great, but I'm never going to make gummy bears appear in my chicken dish at night, right? It's not going to happen, right? I will pop a couple of gummy bears when nobody's looking, uh, but right. it's not going to appear on my chicken or a blow pop sauce. Just not going to happen. So yeah. if you just take uh, really good ingredients that are fresh, fresh. Um, you know, you can take a ride, you can come out of Miami, you can either go to Homestead or you can come up north uh, to the west side of uh, Davie, Boca, uh, Delray, and there's a bunch yeah. of family farms that grow all yeah. sorts of incredible things. You know, in the season, you know, right now it's a little hot and it's coming into the, into the next growing season, but strawberries, uh, all different lettuces, uh, all different root vegetables, all happen here on a daily basis. So you just gotta uh, drive in your car, go shopping once every two weeks at one of these mm -hmm. local farms, and that produce, stay in the shade, out of heat, will last for two weeks because it's all fresh. It hasn't been stunk in a van, driving from California, trying to get it to be a public shelf. It's just fresh stuff. Uh, the Piro family farm up in Boca Raton, they've got great stuff and their green beans are to die for, uh, yeah. FYI. <laughs> so I give them my shout out. Um, I talked before about the sticks, right? Yeah. These little skewers, right? So- That's genius, I'm doing that, that's smart. The, ch the chicken. The chicken breast, right? Uh, all day long, everybody's got chicken all day long. I make little uh, chicken skewers. I season these up. Sometimes I use a spicy seasoning. Sometimes I use, uh, I, my kids are right now on a Greek tip, everything Greek. So uh, we do lemon potatoes, where I take Yukon gold potatoes, uh, roast them in the oven, covered with aluminum foil and olive oil at 400 degrees for about 15, 20 minutes till they get tender. Pull off the aluminum foil, uh, take them off, toss them with oregano and a little bit of squeeze of lemon back into mm. the pan, up high to the heat again, just to get a little crisp on the side of those potatoes. And right. my son and daughter will whack out two pounds of potatoes <laughs> if I give it to them, right? They'll eat them all. Yum. This chicken, I'll season the chicken with, again, just the simple ingredients, olive oil, salt, oregano. Let it marinate. Okay. Uh, go out to your grill. Things on sticks is what I call it, right? Put the, put the chicken on the grill, or you could do it in the broiler. Um, uh, thread some zucchini uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with the skewer, uh, some red pepper, some green pepper. In my experience, if you give a kid something on a stick that tastes good, they will eat it over and over and over again. Yeah. In fact, okay. I'm gonna That's eat this good. right now. Good tip. Oh, you're teasing us, No, not fair. <laughs> I gotta tell you something. It's a pretty good chicken right here. Wow. <laughs> Um, and for dessert, it's so simple. I think I complicated, I way overcomplicated with trying to season things, but. The secret of a good chef is simplicity, right? And that's what I was going back with, with those shows. When you try to confound too many ingredients at too many times, it's, it's competing, right? You're not gonna wear a, a plaid shirt uh, with a polka dot sweater, right? It's just not gonna happen, right? You, you, you're gonna be clashing. I mean, Coco Chanel, I cook like Coco Chanel dresses. Uh, Coco Chanel says, like when you get dressed, take yourself, take a look in the mirror, take one thing off, and then walk out the door. 
right? And I use the same approach with cooking, right? Uh, put all your ingredients out that you're going to put in your dish and then find out which one you really don't need. If you need them all, that's great. I mean, you need socks, you need shoes, right? But you don't need uh, yeah. a big bow on the end of your shoe to walk out the door, right? So that's, right. that's the math. That's the, the transmission I have with my kids. You know, um, the, before we were talking about oils uh, and the use of oils, and, and it reminds me, right, because there's different flavors that oil delivers, right? So if you're using uh, and different smoking temperatures and all those pieces. So, you know, being aware of where good flavor comes from, like coconut oil, for example, uh, while has, uh, you know, some traits that, that overdoing the coconut oil would be too much. But when I cook those banana pancakes in the coconut oil, it's a showstopper, right? Because oh, wow. there's this secret flavor that just I comes up. Flavor, so yeah. uh, it's a little bit of trick here and a little bit of trick there. You know, all be in the Jackson cookbook. All right, perfect. <laughs> That's what one of the questions was, where can we get all this info later? And I do want to say, those of you who are watching, this recording will be available in about a week or so. And so just watch for that and you can go back and we can pause Chef Ralph and say, okay, now what did he say again? So I could make the cauliflower. I feel like I have the cauliflower down, but tell us who was your plug for the fish again? All right, so uh, Pop's Fish Market on Hillsborough in uh, DFBO Beach uh, is absolutely the greatest fish that I go to that I get. Uh, it's fresh. They bring it in all the time. It's great. And I'll tell you what, here's what I'll give you. My email address is Ralph, R-A-L-P-H, pretty simple, at yes, like the opposite of the word no, Y-E-S-F-B-M, like Frank Bravo Mary. Okay. Y-E-S. Okay. Yeah, I don't we know can't if you can see, see that, that, Ralph. We can't All right, well, then I'll stop. Well, then I'll stop. But writing. Ralph uh, at right, yes. Write, write down my email. Yes, Y E S F B M. Hold on, Brian's going to write it down for me. Yep. Come here, Brian. Got you. Okay. Come on. Come on over. You got a marker? I got a marker. And you got any question? Your right, inbox gonna... is going to be loaded later, so just be ready. I hope you have okay. a secretary who can handle that. Oh, I hope <laughs> Becky is watching right now. Yes, F B M dot com. Written like a real chef on a cardboard box. Oh, there it is. Okay, we got it. Dot com. You all can pre order your cookbook right there. If you send him one email a day for the next 365 days, you will secure your cookbook. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, we're, we're going to do a, We're going to do a crowd starter. Uh, we're going to do a crowd That's starter right. cookbook. Don't send any money, just send the email. But I love for real, it. I love it. And listen, anything, any question that you have, it's easy. Send me an email. I can answer it, right? I'll answer it. If I don't answer it today, I'll answer it tomorrow. Uh, if it's important about uh, the meal that you're cooking right now, call me at the restaurant, right? But the, 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 <laughs> but the fact is, um, you know, the, the approach, and I think I'm celebrating this year uh, my 26th year of owning a restaurant. And uh, I've been doing it for I've been doing it for half my life, right? And the real thing that I I figured out along the way, and when I was younger, you know, I was doing like I said, I was trying to do too much and put a lot of things on it. You kind of get you know the old fox and the young fox mentality, right? And, uh, yeah. The the old fox is uh, simple, slow, and steady wins all the races, and uh, just some good ingredients. Um, I find as we're talking everything about children right now, uh, that when I interact with my kids and I don't get, I don't let them uh, watch TV or go on their iPad or, or, or go sit and do something. When I'm cooking, I say, we are cooking, right? So I make them do it. Now, sure, I'm a chef, so that's what I'm going to be doing, right? If I was a painter, I guess if I was painting the house, I'd put a brush in their hand, right? But that's right. Um, I, I, I get them excited about it so that this way that they are excited about it now and it's, good habits now that, that force the good habits later, right? So no processed, here's my, here's my secrets. No processed food, um, uh, sweets are a treat. Uh, they're not a guarantee. Uh, I like the whipped cream move because uh, whipped cream is air and it's good. And it goes such a long way in the kid column of uh, thank you, daddy, uh, right? So, that's right. so fresh, fruit, fresh fruit and whipped cream, that's an easy one, right? And I don't put any, and I don't put any sugar uh, in my whipped cream. I just split a vanilla bean, uh, put it in with the cream, whip it up, and that's mm. the end of the story. I don't even put vanilla extract, just a little fresh bean, 
and then that's in it. And they, they enjoy it, right? Because I'm not tempting them with Carmel corn. I'm not trying to fool them with candy or butterscotch or whatever it is. Just clean flavors, done easily, fresh fish. I think yeah. these are all my secrets. And it's thick. And they're and satisfied. It's, thick. it's satisfying. It's so good. Yeah, and if they wow. don't know any better, they don't know any better. Right, if they don't know, if they don't know bad, they'll they'll never know bad, right? So I, I try to give them right. good, and that's it. I'll tell you a funny story. I was in sixth grade. Uh, I went to a new school in sixth grade. Now I come from a distinct uh, ethnic background. I am half Italian, half Lebanese, right? And I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. And, Great combo. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's very fiery, and the food's really good, right? My kids love hummus, bubba ganoush. My daughter eats grape leaves. Every day, I, if I'll make the grape leaf, when my mom comes down from New York, she, ba- she packs a suitcase of clothes and a suitcase of food. And in the food is uh, kibbe balls and, and grape leaves and the makings for tabbouleh. And my daughter goes absolutely nuts for it. And, you know, the, 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 the story is I, went to, I started a new school in sixth grade. I go to the lunchroom and I got in my lunch bag, I got pita bread with lebna, which is like a kefir cheese, like a, oh, most like good. yogurt, right? And so tabbouleh, good. right? That's, that's, my, that's my thing. And then these uh, almond date cookies uh, that my grandmother makes that are called Kagba Ajwa, the greatest name ever. And uh, so, I, so I'm in the class, uh, we go to lunch, and a friend of mine who's my friend to this day, Ray Bayer, I'm gonna send him this when it's all done. So we opened up our lunches, and he, and he looks at me and he goes, What's that you're eating? I said, this is Tipuli and Lebna. He goes, he goes, he goes, that's crap. I go, what are you eating? He goes, this is ham and cheese. And I said, oh. nobody, I said, nobody in your house loves you. Right? So <laughs> from, when we, from when we were little. And the fact was, that was the sandwich that I grew up eating. And it, yeah. it still, it, it still holds the water to this day. Yeah. Right? So, and wow. I wasn't a chef then. I was just a little kid. Oh, that's so good. Chef, okay, I have to say, do you cook with, um, like, do the Lebanese use za'atar? I just love some za'atar. Oh, it's the best. Uh, so you good. take, uh, that, that's breakfast at my mom's house. So breakfast at my mom's house is pita bread, uh, drizzle of olive oil, za'atar into the toaster oven. That's it. And then uh, later on that day, take that same pita bread, maybe it gets a little toasty, and then fold that into the salad for your patouche. Yum. Oh my goodness. We could go all night. I wish we could because this is so good. I love it. Most everyone has stuck with us and we've gone almost 30 minutes over because it's that good. We just, we need the part two. We're going to rally Jackson for a part two, but um, Chef Ralph, thank you so much for being with us tonight. We appreciate you taking the time to be with us and right there in your restaurant. How awesome. I just want to make a plug. Everybody get out to Naked Taco now that restaurants are open again, right? Can we come in and eat there? You can come in and eat here. The Naked Taco is uh, alive and well, and uh, uh, we're happy to see everybody. Uh, we want everybody to stay safe at this time. It's a, it's a strange, crazy time. We've never seen it before, but I can tell you that guacamole and tequila makes everything okay. <laughs> there you, you heard it here, folks. I love it. Uh, thank you so much for your time and your expertise. Also, thank you, Dr. Fifi. So many great questions. I'm sorry we couldn't get to every single one. You all have Ralph's emails, so just bombard him with your questions, ask him for the recipes. Can't wait. I'm really trying the cauliflower this week. I cannot wait. Um, I do want to make a plug just to remind you all, these are going to continue. So join us in three weeks. Okay, so mark your calendars for September. I think three weeks is the 24th. We're going to be talking about um, navigating COVID if you have a child on the autism spectrum. So this is going to be a really special one. Um, Adjusting to life in pandemic is stressful to begin with, but imagine, you know, having a child who has sensory issues and mask wearing all of this it's just gonna it's challenging so join us as we explore that and we um you know talk about coping during covid and learning what jackson is doing to support patients with asd during these crazy challenging times so lots of good things coming that's september 24th 8 p.m and then again you can watch all the recordings from all of our whole series on jacksonevents.org um again just thank you audience for joining us we hope you enjoyed it at the feedback that we got is telling me that you loved it i sure did um chef ralph thank you dr fifi thank you thank you for having us that my pleasure my pleasure awesome my pleasure. And dr. Everyone fifi, you are amazing. thank you that's right have a wonderful labor day weekend go eat some tacos everybody